There are a lot of ways to play Dia. None of them are good. But that's okay, because it's still fun. The nicest thing I can say about Dia is she tries her best. If her kit was half as cooked as her foot, maybe the Dia treatment wouldn't be a term people use to describe Doom-posted characters that haven't been released yet. Her role in the party is meant to be a sustaining support. Unfortunately, the only support she provides me is the emotional kind. I got you, boss. Her skill can do coordinated attacks once every 2.5 seconds, and she can transfer a portion of the damage your active character takes to herself. Casting this a second time allows you to reposition it, but does not extend the duration. When her health falls below a certain threshold, she gets a 20% heal and a heal over time on a 20 second cooldown. Her elemental burst looks cool as f and based on the animation, you would think it does damage. You'd be wrong. Mashing E or left click throws more punches in, and there's no reason not to do this. And dashing into a jump allows you to force her final kick early. Conceptually, she has an interesting kit. In practice, her defensive utility is not necessarily terrible, but its uptime without constellations is low, and it's possible your on-field unit falls to chip damage eventually. In addition to this, particularly high-pressure situations can cause Dia to die from her own passive off-field, so you may decide you want to pack a pocket healer anyway. The interruption resistance buff is also pretty short. Maybe that's why I find her relatable. Her off-field power application is too slow for anything practically useful. She doesn't synergize with units like Beidou, Singcho, and Yolan that strike in conjunction with normal attacks. Her ER requirements are higher than my tolerance for emotional abuse. And her damage is... not. Not only is her damage offensive, and not in the good way, her burst can be prematurely cancelled with a jump. And that's it. No fancy finish, or final explosion. Just nothing. The obvious solution is, just don't jump. But if you get frozen, guess what button is bound to your release? Despite this, she is one of my favorite units. Her animations go hard, her voice actresses are great, and despite her terrible power application, her part in the story was enough to melt my heart. So, if you have Dia, either willingly or not, what can you do to make her work? Your best. Don't try this at home, because you will not be impressed. If you're looking for the bare minimum level of investment, you can use Dia purely as a supporter. The build is full HP. Oddly enough, a healing bonus circlet is also okay. Talent priority is elemental skill, then burst, then don't touch normal attacks. She makes pretty good use out of the 4-piece tenacity of the Millilith set, giving your team a 20% attack buff, but you can also opt for two of that and two Vorokasha's glow if you just want a bigger health pool. If survivability is still a concern, you can also go for Maiden's Beloved or Ocean Huge Clam. You won't see impressive damage procs out of the Clam set, but you probably weren't expecting impressive damage in general anyway. If you find survivability is less of a concern, you can choose the 4-piece Instructor set for an elemental mastery buff for the team, provided you do a reaction on her skill cast. Note that this is a 4-star artifact set, so you'll be missing out on a lot of bulk. For weapons, you should go for Favonius to help your team alleviate energy requirements, but you'll need some crit rate to facilitate its passive. On that note, Sacrificial Greatsword is not a good choice, as using Dia as a support doesn't generally utilize her burst, which minimizes the value of her ER. And resetting her elemental skill does not give you more uptime on her interruption resistance buff. Then we have the Bell, which is something you'd only use for more HP. As for team compositions, she has a few viable options. She may even see some synergies in the near or distant future. She lends a helping hand to any squishies that feel despair in getting slapped around, and in many cases, can contribute towards activating your Pyro Resonance buff. In many of the Vaporized teams where she can provide support, her lower and slower Pyro application is actually a good thing, as she's less likely to steal Vaporized reactions from your carry or interfere with your Hydro Aura. She can still do it though, especially with a character like Hu Tao whose Pyro application is so high she rhymes with Snoop. Being a power unit with off-field presence, kinda, means you may have thought of using her to enable your reverse melt or forward vape parties. That kind of works. On her own, she won't do much, but if you bring a strong off-field dendro unit like Nahida, and kind of only Nahida, you can consistently maintain a burning reaction, which will let you get your melts or vapes in. While there are better and arguably more comfortable options, this isn't totally coping. Bringing a shielder for interruption resistance is good, but if your shield ever breaks, you may be forced to swap out. Dia's interruption resistance buff has a 9 second duration, and the only restriction is that you have to stay in her field, so unless something goes terribly sideways, you'll never have to finish prematurely. Maybe that's why I like using her so much. If your sustaining needs are sufficiently satiated, you can assume the stature of something slaughter-centric. 4-piece Golden Troop will provide more damage on her elemental skill, but you'll likely be underwhelmed. Instead, I'd recommend going green. Dia can be used in Burgeon or Hyper Burgeon teams where she triggers Dendro cores with her elemental skill. It's not great, but you can do it. Her elemental skill's hitbox is at the enemy's center, so particularly tall monsters actually keep her out of reach of Dendro cores. But hey, that gives you an excuse to use her burst. In the case of Hyper Burgeon, it's really just Hyper Bloom, but you get to bring Dia. For talent priority, we still have skill first, burst next, and normals never, but our artifact selection changes. Now we try to target full EM. 4-piece Gilded Dreams is the way to go, especially since it shares the same domain as Deepwood Memories, which you'll also need, but Flowers of Paradise Lost isn't bad either. Dia's slow proc rate doesn't really justify flop farming in my opinion, but you'll see the biggest burgeon numbers this way. 
If you don't have those options available, just stacking EM is fine, and if no one else is holding it, she maintains pretty good uptime on the Deepwood Memories artifact set. For weapons, Melt Flower is my recommended selection, but it's an event weapon and therefore doomed to never return. If you don't have it available, the Forest Regalia Claymore is craftable and provides an EM buff for a character of your choice, provided you can reach or even find the leaf under all that chaos. But my billets, you may say. Options like Rain Slasher or Blood Tainted Greatsword will also get you by, and Sacrificial Greatsword can get you slightly better uptime on her elemental skill field. Addressing Burgeon first, teammates include a Hydro, a Dendro, a Dia, and a Dream. You can either have on-field Dendro and off-field Hydro, or vice versa. Your remaining slot should try to fill whatever weakness your core units of choice have to generate more Dendro cores, but don't stress over this too much. An enemy can only take up to two instances of Burgeon damage in half a second, so generating too many cores doesn't do you any good. If you're finding you have an abundance of cores, you can justify using Dia's burst to pop any extras that linger, and it's kinda fun. And if you want even more Burgeon and have C6 Bennett, you can on-field Dia and swing away. This, however, requires good off-field Hydro and Dendro, but her normal attacks look really cool. Any Hyper Bloom core, plus literally anyone, is fine. So just Dia, and don't burst. Because of the extra Pyro Dia brings, you'll really benefit from having more consistent Dendro application, so units that can apply Dendro easily like Nahida, Baiju, Alhatham, or even Kave are preferable, but units like Yayao and Dendro Traveler can also work in AoE as long as you don't accidentally blow up Traveler's Bulb. For Hydro units, anyone with decent off-field presence will do fine. Kokomi, Singcho, and Yelan are generally seen as the meta most moist for this, but units like Ayato and Farina are great for AoE Hydro application. You can use an on-field Hydro like Nuvolet if you'd like, but that will require a strong off-field Dendro like Nahida. Finally, your Electro units are typically between Kuki or Raiden, but Dori isn't bad either. Other options like Fischl or Yai don't reliably trigger Dendro cores off-field, but they can kind of work since Dia's skill will occasionally pop the rest. If you take half-speed Pyro procs and half-consistent Electro procs, you get maximum power. Speaking of maximum power, if you want peak, Copeless, unbiased, I'm definitely not just being a simp, Dia Performance, run her as an on-field DPS. In this case, the talent priority shifts to burst first, skill next, and normal attacks if your Dia is huge. For artifacts, despite the existence of Vorakasha's Glow, I still recommend Emblem of Severed Fate. Dia's ER requirements are quite high. This can be mitigated with things like Favonius weapons on your supports, but Emblem's two-piece bonus provides about four substats worth of ER, which then feeds into damage on the four-piece set effect. Her C4 lowers her requirements by quite a lot, but still not enough to the point where I'd consider or recommend swapping to anything else. If you can meet our Hungry Lion's needs and have Dia's C6, Borokasha's Glow and Marishase Hunter can yield higher damage output, but the domain of the former isn't very resin efficient, and the effect of the latter without Farina may be inconsistent and doesn't work off-field, so I'm hesitant to recommend those options. Other options exist, but considering the amount of ER you need, I don't feel like these are worth targeting. On that note, artifact main stats may vary. Goblet and Circlet should be Pyro and Crit respectively, but Sands can be a number of things. If you're having trouble bursting consistently, aim for Energy Recharge. In general, Attack or ER Sands will be best for damage, but a case can be made for Elemental Mastery if you're playing her as a Vaporize or Melt Carry and you have comparable substats. HP Sands is good for survivability, but not great for damage until at least C1. At C1, Attack is still better, but the gap closes, so if you have better substats on your HP Sands, it could be the stronger option for you. For weapons, give our girl that bacon. If you have it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend pulling on the Chronicled Wish banner, but if you're a huge Dia simp, Beacon of the Reed Sea is available on there at the time of this video's release. Outside of that, other 5-star options are viable as at least stat 6 if nothing else. Redhorn, Stone Thresher, Wolf's Gravestone, and Verdict are good for damage on top of adding some drip to our pyro for a little bit of visual vaporizing. Other options like Skyward Pride, The Unforged, Tidal Shadow, Akuomaru, Luxurious Sea Lord, Mailed Flower if you're vaping or melting, and Serpent Spine even without stacks are also competitive amongst each other. Onto teams, the most comfortable and viable is probably Mono Pyro. I'd be lying if I said Bennett, Shangling, and Kazaha weren't doing most of the heavy lifting, but having three Pyro units, two of which work very well together, reduces Dia's ER requirements and makes it at least feel like she's doing something. In a similar vein, with the addition of Chevrus, you can also try Overload Dia. Fischl's presence helps with Dia's energy, and watching things explode is pretty fun, but at the cost of Bennett or Shangling, not only can this feel kinda cope, but also pretty bad, especially if the things you're hitting get yeeted out of your punch range. If you want to be truly diabolical and push Dia into the spotlight, you can melt or vaporize her flame main pain train, and you might feel pretty good for about 5 seconds. Then you spend the next 16 years getting her energy back up. But if you don't want to worry about energy and you still want to do fat vapes, the obvious solution is stripping away the cool parts of her kit and plunging, but this one requires you to level your normal attacks above all else. If you actually want her to have an identity and push her personal damage to the limit, a unit like Rosari can provide a crit buff and allow for consistent melts if you tag Kazuha in and infuse Cryo into his burst. Farina is also a great option for her damage buff and Hydra application if you want it to vaporize instead.
And finally, my favorite team to play actually uses Mona. The rotation is a little weird, but you learn to cope. Mona's burst falls off before Dia's incineration drive kick, but if you need to cut the rotation short for whatever reason, you can dash and jump to use the kick early, and maybe you'll catch the end of the omen for a thick vape. The only thing fatter than a vaporized omened incineration drive kick is Dia's, and I guess also pretty much every other pyro carry in the game, but this ain't about them. Unfortunately, the teams that best showcase Dia's personal damage are all kind of cope. That's a tough pill to swallow, and trust me, I've swallowed a lot of pills. The timing is pretty tight, so I'd recommend getting comfortable with your alt keys. Alt and a number will switch to the unit corresponding to that number and just rip their burst. Buff alignment isn't perfect. Like I mentioned, Mona's omen falls off before Dia's burst completely finishes. Trying to push her omen after the skill will not only still not get you the incineration drive kick of your dreams, but you'll also lose vapes along the way. Cope with me in the comments section. These team comps are not optimal, but you already knew that. If you were looking for optimal, you wouldn't be here. Unfortunately, Dia isn't really the best choice for any of the teams discussed in this video. In a lot of cases, Toma tends to be better as a defensive option for his shield, or even an offensive option for Burgeon through his burst. Dia's utility is largely devalued by the fact that you often need to bring a healer with her anyway, meaning you lose a valuable team slot for what could have been another strong buffer, debuffer, or sub DPS. And in terms of raw damage, she's overshadowed by units whose output isn't tied to enormous energy recharge requirements, or can do significant contributions without needing much field time. Maybe she'd do damage if she didn't throw away the nice sword I blew all my primos on. If you're looking for a unit to build with the intention of increasing the power level of your account, Dia's not it. But she is a lot of fun, and her lower damage output means you effectively get to enjoy more combat. If you're a player that does too much damage and you're tired of things dying in one rotation or less, Dia's a breath of fresh air. So, if you got Dia by accident and you were wondering what you could do with her, the TLDW is not much. But there are some options. And if you pulled for her on her debut banner, congratulations, you're just as dumb as I am. But you have my respect. And Dia. But before you despair, there is one thing Dia excels in beyond all other units in the game. You can AFK in Dragonspine and never die. Just as a side note, YouTube says I should tell you guys I have a new button. Don't use it. This is not a reverse psychology thing, I actually have nothing to offer you. In order to enable that button, YouTube made me create a members only post. This is it. I don't do FOMO. The four piece tenacity of the middle of. Oh no, this is gonna be hard. She makes pretty good use out of the tenacity of the four piece. What? No. Tenacity of the middle of the set. Lilith. She makes pretty good use out of the four piece tenacity of the middle of. Lilith. Tenacity of the middle of. Lilith. Who, who the f made up that word?